after you spend a week of hard work and polish on your take home design challenge, what's next is typically a presentation of that. So here are the questions. What's the best way to prepare for that? What should you include? How do you structure it? What are some common red flags? What should you keep an eye on? Well, I'm gonna address all of those today because in this video, I'm gonna walk you through all those questions from a hiring manager's perspective so you can know what to expect, approach with the right mindset, and ultimately, make it to the next round. This is gonna be a short and sweet video, so let's get into it, y'all. Good morning everyone, my name is Justine, I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Let's plan the right mindset in the beginning, shall we? When you present your design exercise, your design challenge, make sure to pay attention to the audience. Who are you presenting it to? Who are the users? What are they looking for? What are their mental models? What are their expectations? Essentially, you're using design thinking to help you prepare for this interview round. From a high level, a design exercise presentation is a dumbed down version of your portfolio presentation. It's dumbed down because you have less information to present, so everything is simplified. You have about 30 to 45 minutes to walk through your solution, with some questions they will ask you from here and there, and maybe even a dedicated Q&A in the end. And that's the wrap for the high level. You got it, right? Now, without further ado, let's dive right into the detailed detail, details. First, let's go over some formats. Personally, I have presented my design exercise take home challenge in two formats, two ways. One is the phone interview. I talk through it on the phone, over the phone, kind of weird. Second is the video call. It's a standard, I would say. I personally prefer a video call because it's easier to share and point out things on the slide if I need to. So if initially I get a phone interview, I will try to get them to change the video call. So just FYI there, it's possible, it's doable, ask them. Next is the structure, the presentation structure. Remember I just said the presentation for design exercise is pretty much the same as a portfolio presentation? Well, that means you can present both in a very similar way. As for the design exercise, let's just say it's a mobile app. You are still solving some sort of problem. So after your hero image, your title slide that draws the attention, you will go into the problem statement. What's the problem? Why is there a problem? What's your angle? And what are some of your critical thinking that go behind it? Keep it just one slide. Don't spend too much time on it. If we, the hiring manager, give the prompt, we pretty much know what it's going to be about. So you are essentially reaffirming what it is, reminding us what it is, and adding some of your personal take if you have any. Next is solution. No, no, no. Next is pause. After you finish the problem statement, pause give them some breathing rooms don't rush the presentation let them ask any question if they have any to maybe challenge your critical thinking your rationale behind the problem statement that you just gave them then present your solution how do the five features you design help solve the problem walk me through the flow how do you go from this screen to another screen what's special about it any interesting stories and insights behind it any testings any observations that you made as you're presenting go slower and leave some intentional breaks for them to ask questions in between slides this is a little bit more nuanced and pay attention to because you don't want to over pause pause every single slide every single feature you talk about that, that, that's too much so going a little bit slower will help them cut in somewhat interrupt with a question without them feeling too rude asking questions. Got it? Very nuanced. Finally, you can go through some process, how you got to the solutions. Remember, this is the sprinkle time, not the cake, not the cake. This is a time to call out some pivotal moments for your development process. Maybe you did one market research that led you down this path. And then this wireframe that you did gave you another idea that pushed you to another direction. Or maybe you learned something new in testing, observation that took you to another path. Again, only sprinkles of pivotal moments. Don't present a process book. I don't want to see that. No hiring manager want to see that. Also, maybe keep a secret menu for everything that you have done or things that you anticipate that you might want to show or any interesting images, photos, wireframes, pictures, animations that you think they would want to see or they might ask you about. It's a secret menu, so you don't really present it until it comes up. The nice thing is, when it comes up, you have something to show them and it also shows you're prepared. Great impression. All right, how are we doing? Still following? Great. Too bad this is a YouTube video that I cannot let you ask any questions. But you just see what I did there? I paused to give you some break, to give you some breathing room, to make it less intense, feel more like a conversation. 
after you catch your breath, let's get into some real common questions that you might get in a take-home exercise presentation Q&A. For example, they might ask you, how do you validate this design? This is essentially asking you, how do you validate? How do you know you solve the user's problem? So what do you do? How do you know? What do you do? I test it. Absolutely correct. But say with more confidence, you will do user testing and find out and give more details about how you would test it. it will be great. It will be fantastic. Remember my previous video on design exercise? If you were to do some testing to back up your design decisions, how will you test it? How will you verify your decision was right? If you made any assumptions in the process, how do you validate them if you were to do the test? That's why it will come in handy in the presentation if you have thought about it while you were designing it, rather than thinking about it on the spot. Next, why do you choose this interaction pattern? You get this question especially if you're trying to come up with some new patterns, the one that you come up with, the one you design, the one you show them, derails from a common one. So make sure you have a good reason for it. You put it here just because you have space? Red flag. You put it there just because? Red flag. You put it there, oh, you don't know? Red flag. Again, you should already know all these when you are designing it. So there should be no surprise here. It should be very straightforward. Next, what's the most challenging part of this project? Only you know this one. What took you the longest and why you think that is? Explain to them. It should be straightforward too. Next, if you were to go back to your project and keep doing it, keep working on it, what will you do? This is one of my favorite. As I keep emphasizing, design never ends. There are always more things to do, new ways to improve because there's a change in user behavior. You have more insight in user testing, the global trend, the technological breakthrough, etc., etc., etc. So spend a few minutes on it while you're preparing. So those are the questions that I got asked or I asked the candidates before. So they're very, very. And if you want to find more questions, you have a powerful tool in your hand already. Now I'm going to give you all the things to watch out for, keep an eye on, keep it in mind when you're doing it, when you're presenting it, when you're preparing for it. Number one, make sure to pause. Any questions? Next, make sure to control your narrative, especially if you present your design exercise, design challenge over the phone. We can look at page five, you will see the home screen and how it connects to all other subscreens in the menu. If you go to page 21, you should see a secret menu. And that's where you can find the animal style of double doubles. Number three, make sure to add arrows and tabs for the flows. Again, focus on the users here. Design thinking, you're presenting it, to your hiring manager, the hiring manager. I have no idea what your design is. I have no idea how to get from screen A to screen B. And I don't bother to spend so much effort and mental energy to think about it. You should tell me. So add any necessary arrows or tab circles or animation or any necessary visuals to help me visualize and see it. Oh, I get it. So show me, let me see it, not infer it. Last one, number four. If you have not checked out my UX interview series yet, there are a lot more useful and actionable tips waiting for you. Anyway, that is it for today. If you find this video useful, please destroy the like button to help support this very, very, very small channel. And consider subscribing so you don't miss any future UX and design videos. If you want to age your UX portfolio presentation and avoid some interview traps, I do have more useful tips along with some exclusive insights on Apple, Google, Facebook interview processes. Check them out right here. Keep designing a better future and see you all in the next video. Tschüss.